Welcome to Spacecraft Guide, the channel that goes over the most iconic spacecraft in the world. In this issue of Spacecraft Guide, we're going to do more some work on the Space Shuttle. And down on the bottom, if you go here, we're going to look at the main landing gear. And when you click on the main landing gear door, it takes you to the main landing gear main, main landing gear page. So you can see uh, the landing gear is on the orbital is a conventional aircraft tricycle tricycle configuration consisting of a nose landing gear and left and right main gear. The nose gear is located in forward of the fuselage and the main landing gear is in the lower left and right ring area adjacent to the mid fuselage. Each landing gear includes a stock a shock strut and two wheel tire assemblies. Each main landing gear is equipped with a brake assembly with anti-skid protection. Now, also into this, uh, we, we have video description, but this video description is different. This is not going to explain the system as I read it. It's actually going to be of Fred Hayes, who was the test pilot for it, and also on Apollo 13. And he's going to describe what they were testing on the landing gear and how they did it. And if you click on General, you'll see that the landing gear deployment is initiated when the commander or the pilot depresses the landing gear arm push button. So the landing gear arm push button is here and the guarded down push button at least 15 seconds before predicted touchdown at a speed no greater than 310 knots uh, air, indicated airspeed at 300 plus or minus 100 feet above the ground. So they also have a note here that deploying the landing gear at equivalent air speeds greater than 312 knots may result in high aerodynamic loads on the doors and interference with the normal opening sequence. In other words, if you're going too fast, the gear is not going to come down. But you're in a predicament because you have to be uh, slow enough that the gear comes down, but you don't want to be too slow that you stall and fall out of the sky. And notice here also that you're you're dropping the gear at 300 feet above ground level. Now, I can say as being an, uh, an airline pilot, at a thousand feet, not only do we want to have the gear down, but we want to have all the flaps out and everything configured. So this is very low to the ground. So what they're doing here is extremely um, very close numbers that they need to land the aircraft on the ground. When you click on non-normals, this will take you to the landing gear page and you'll see the note here, which is talking about deploying the landing gear and equivalent airspeed greater than 312 knots. Now that is also a limitation on this, but that is your non-normal. It's putting the landing gear down above 312 knots. Going to normal procedures, we can see uh, it tells us basically the landing gear is initiated when the commander or pilot depresses the armed push button and then the garden down push button at least 15 seconds before predicted touchdown at a speed no greater than 312 knots, 300 feet above the ground. So that's the normal procedure. And what I like here is you push the push button at least 15 seconds before predicted touchdown. So you have to time when you're going to be 300 feet above the ground. And we also have acronyms, which is the last of the acronyms. As you can see here, I just clicked on L. And when you click on schematic, we're gonna talk about how the landing gear 
is dropped and here it is electronically the crew through the crew con controls that power the control signals that uh, drops the nose landing gear and this is up lock and strut actuators um, and then the nose landing gear steering actuator and the main landing gear up lock and strut actuators and the main landing gear brakes you can see there are three hydraulic systems for it but we have um, the arrows are, are what we are looking at because here we have system one does the nose landing gear up lock and strut actuators and also does the nose landing gear steering actuators system two does the nose landing gear and the nose landing gear steering actuator and also the main landing gear up locks and strut actuators as does system one and system three that basically takes care of the main landing gear brakes so if we break that down even further to a better diagram i like this one a lot more we have hydraulic system one system two and hydraulic system three now we have hydraulic system one and it also we see it goes to the brakes valve one valve two and valve three because you really want it's very you really want to slow this down especially going as quick as they are but this tees off here to landing extend isolation valve and the landing extend valve one and then here the main gear deploy and then landing gear two helps with the landing gear extend valve two so what hydraulic system one does is it drops the gear it opens the up locks that we have and then the pressure from it helps move the gear down from hydraulic systems one and two and then they use the hydraulic system for the nose wheel steering but we'll get into that a little bit later so that in a nutshell is how the landing gear is deployed on the space shuttle One last thing I'd like to go over is the video description. And when you click on that, it takes you to a YouTube video. And you can hear Fred Hayes talking about how they tested the shuttle to land and what they were doing when they were testing. And we would like to thank our friends at space and things who actually recorded and interviewed this with fred hayes and if you want to hear their whole interview with him that doesn't only talk about what he did on the space shuttle a little bit on a, uh, the apollo program and then what he did in the future you can click right here that's all for this week if you would like to use this interactive virtual reality exhibit on the command module, the lunar module, and the surface of the moon. Just go to our Patreon page and the link will be down below.